Jane Ezra here. Today I'm going to introduce you to two video analysis tools that I use daily in my practice, Media Info and Bitrate Viewer. And this is the first of a series of videos I'm going to produce on video tools that I use to help analyze the files I produce and make sure I'm getting what I want. The first tool is Media Info. As you can see, it's available on a number of operating systems, including Windows, Mac, a number of Linux flavors, and I've got this installed on every computer in my office. One of the things I like about Media Info is if it's configured correctly, you can hover your pointer over a file and get file details like the codec, resolution, frame rate for a number of different file types. You can also right click a file, and let me do the H.264 file, and choose Media Info and open it that way. Now, to enable those two options, Go to your preferences, after installing it of course, and make sure this is selected so that you can open up a file from your right click menu and the Explorer tooltip is selected. So here's the tool and as you can see there are three basic areas. Audio is down here, video is here, and this is general file based information and container format information. A lot of interesting video details here. Which codec, which profile, CABC or CAVLC, file duration, data rate, resolution, and frame rate. You also get to see whether it's constant or variable bitrate encoding, and the bits per pixel, which is a, a useful measure of the compression in the file. Similar details provided for audio. You've got channels, bitrate, constant versus variable. Very much data very quickly for free. Another thing I like about the product is that in HTML view you can look at the configuration options that were actually implemented by either FFmpeg or an FFmpeg based encoder. So if I download a file from the internet and I want to analyze it a lot of the time, not all the time, you can bring it into Media Info click into this view and then you can see exactly how the file was encoded. The keyframe interval of 250 and this is all FFmpeg based options. So if you're familiar with FFmpeg you'll know what these most of them are and if you're not you can you can typically figure them out. Note that this information is available in all the views. It's just a lot harder to see when you're in the tree view. So I usually if I'm in this view I would copy it and paste it into a text view or text file, but it's a lot easier if you just click over to HTML. Note that you start out in basic view, not the tree view. I just don't find this useful, so I spend most of my time in the tree view. The real cool thing about Media Info, again, is file compatibility. It's going to tell you information about AV1 files, H.264 we saw, HEVC, WebM, pretty much every file I've ever tried to throw at it, Media Info has been able to load and tell me information about it. The second tool is a tool called Bitrate Viewer. Bitrate Viewer is no longer in production, so you're going to have to download it from a number of different sites that offer it for download. I googled Bitrate Viewer download and this is the site that it brought me to. And this is what Bitrate Viewer looks like. And as you can see, what you get is a graphical view of the file. So this is the data rate of the file over the one second file duration. And this is the per second indicator of size. And you'll see what I mean in a second when we, we look at some other indicators of size. Information you get here is the average bit rate. You get the number of frames. You get the resolution, frame rate. Here you get the average bit rate and then the peak bit rate. All very valuable information to understand how deliverable a file might be. And when I talk about views, this is the per second. So each one of these chunks is a second. You can also look at GOP based. So each one of these chunks is now a GOP or a group of pictures. You can look at a frame based view, which I find less useful. Let's go back here. Now there's a couple of different sizes for Bitrate Viewer. Bitrate Viewer, this is the 2x size, and when you click into 2x size, you typically start out getting this error message. And apparently the developer was going to do a Bitrate Viewer 3.0. That never came out. And this is kind of a pain, but you can get rid of it by 
loading additional instances of Bitrate Viewer and then clicking those into standard size and that gets rid of the error message. Note that even though the graphical information is expanded in 2x view, sorry about this, so the graphical information is expanded, the text-based information isn't. So this text is the same size as this text. So if you're creating a presentation and you want to show just the graphical elements, then 2x mode is really useful. If you're creating a presentation and you need this information to come through, I find 2x view not as helpful, and I typically just use 1x view. The thing that's not good about Bitrate Viewer is that because it was developed in 2011, it only supports H.264 and I believe MPEG-2. does not support HEVC, does not support AV1, does not support WebM. So it's useful if you're producing H.264, and let's face it, we're all producing H.264, but as you move into more advanced codecs, you're going to need more advanced tools. Tomorrow we'll have a look at one, or whenever I get the presentation done, we'll look at Telstream Switch, which is an inexpensive tool to get a lot of the same graphical information you get with Bitrate Viewer, but for the other file formats that you'll be working with. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.